We started the year off with some colossal laws. The Poet Laureate of South Africa, Gora Betsuchositzile, followed very shortly by a musical icon of South Africa, Brahu Masikela, who was also a massive friend of design in Daba and Cape Town. So I say that we are collapsing space and time because we're reaching into that ah, that dimension now to touch Brahu and to say thank you. Yeah. And as I would love it if you could assist us with your visual voice in kicking off these festivities, we'll show you how we talk to those people on the other side in Africa. It's one final translation in the spirit of Indaba, from a thought to a word to an action. Please lift up this screen. you then I kissed you on my return I watched you from every corner and every curve and I wondered was it all a blessing or all a curse but you prove it to me but look at how far we've come but look at how far we've come yeah Oh, 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 I know it's true. Oh, 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 I know it's true, yeah. Cause I found a heaven in you. I found a heaven in you. Not a doubt in my head. Now one little shadow, no, all love just instead. I think that I found the one, I mean, how could I not? When every picture we're in makes my heart stop, yeah. Oh, man, you take me so high up. Thank you. This was the last big collaboration that Brahu did before he passed on. What does it mean to you now? I think when I was given the opportunity to, to do a song with you, Masekela, I think it, it came across as something, sort of just another thing that I was going to be doing, you know, and I thought, yes, it's cool, but I didn't kind of grasp what it was. How in huge, yes. Yeah. And looking back now, I have said this on countless times, that it, was, it is, remains the highlight of my career so far. Wow. wow. We appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for coming and performing live. Thank you. Yeah, Bless yeah. You guys. Jay something, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but we... So Rahu was a massive friend of DI. Each time he came to DI, he presented something different, something original, something that hadn't been done before. Beyond being a musician, beyond being a custodian of culture, beyond referencing everything from jazz to African folk music to gospel to choral music to music from the diaspora, Brahu was passionate about art and about the continent, and about creativity, and about activism. His, his footprint touched 
all of those worlds. And those are all of the worlds that I think DI seeks to also harness in its partnerships with the organizations that it works with and with the artists that it works with. So in trying to imagine a befitting tribute coming from DI, coming from Cape Town, for a, a colossal musical, artistic, political force, you know? And, and now an archangel of South Africa. We had to come up with something very, 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 very big. The gift that we are giving to you, Brahu, is a gift for really the, the city of Cape Town and art lovers, for the, the uh, massive, community of people who love and appreciate art on the African continent. What I would like to do now, even though I know he doesn't want me to do it, but to give context, proper context to this, I want to call a man who never wants to be on this stage. So please, can you join me in welcoming to the stage Mr. Ravi Naidu? I know, I'm sorry, executive decision. What does Brahu mean to DI? I had this wonderful experience last year. I'm sitting at the Sona Music Festival, and uh, you know, I go around the world scanning to look for interesting things to bring back and present to all my good friends. And uh, I went to a show uh, with Bjork performing. And at some stage in the show, she was playing a track that seemed to be overlaid on some of Brahu's music. So I'm about row one, courtesy of our hosts at Sona, and I call Brahu and I hold the phone up aloft, and I play the music through to, to, through to him. And then when it just, the track finishes, I'll call you back shortly, I'll call you back shortly. <laughs> and uh, that evening, I had dinner for one, which is quite glamorous when you travel. And, but then during <laughs> dinner, my dinner companion was Hugh Masekela. Wow. So I phoned him at that dinner. And during that dinner, I said something to him that I always wanted to say to him, but I actually then said to him quite often, and I said to him, I loved him. And I absolutely loved him. In fact, there's a timeline on my Twitter timeline, which goes back, I said absolutely explicitly, I love you, Hugh Masekela. Mm. And mostly because he's been such an amazing inspiration. I've learned so many things from him. The one thing I learned from him is uh, his generosity. Mm -hmm. he sh he's probably one of the most connected South Africans I know. Yes. So you'd spend time with him, he would say, Ravi, you know who you really must talk to? You must talk to Paul Simon. Hold on a sec, just hold on a sec. Uh, Paul, there's this guy here, you really need to speak to him. And he hands the phone over, and I, Paul Simon, hi. And Paul's jamming in the foot of his garden, uh, and his home is in Connecticut, and I have a chinwag with, with Paul Simon. Wow. So there's, there's that. Wow. And then he will say, um, you know, if he misses the call, he promised you that he had this old school ethic. He will return a call absolutely inside 24 hours, wow. absolutely every single time. I've got so many wonderful memories. And then in every single time we collaborated, he never did the same thing twice. What are some of the collaborations that you guys worked on together? So like the first time he came here, I said to him, Brahu, uh, I want to make you comfortable. And I don't think you're a natural born speaker, so I don't want you to go anywhere near that podium. And instead, I'd like you to tell your story. He's such a great conversationalist. All the time I spent with him, you just have to press play, and it gives you and all of this wonderful Google, experiences yeah. of hanging with Jimi Hendrix and partying with Miles Davis and so on. And I just loved you know, living the 60s with him. And he was so generous about all of this, and he had like absolutely perfect recall. And then I said to him, who would make you feel comfortable? Who's the kind of person that you could have a real conversation with? And maybe not just Michael Beirut, who's a great conversationalist, but maybe it could be someone else. He says there's only one person on the planet. And this guy is Stuart Levine, mm. and Stuart lives in LA. And of course, he reaches for his phone, he calls Stuart, hands the phone over to me, and I said, hi Stuart, what are you doing in six weeks time? And then Stuart comes over, and then Stuart and him have this most gorgeous conversation on the stage. And uh, then they performed. And they performed in such a beautiful way, like there's Raymond van Niekerk sitting here. Raymond van Niekerk was chief marketing officer at Investec at the time. And uh, he was sitting right there in London. And during that talk and the performance, he was bald like a baby. Monday afterwards, when he went back to London, he handed in his resignation letter wow. to move back to Cape Town. So Bra Hugh got under your skin in the most beautiful ways. Yeah. Subsequently, he said, listen, I've, I was struggling with um, a friend of mine's not probably doing so well right now. Maybe we could get him involved in a project. And so we flew out Larry Willis, longtime collaborator, and he did this gorgeous kind of jazz standard duet that we did out in the mahogany room. 
And I think a lot of us who come to Design and Daba had this beautiful, intimate evening with Bra Hugh playing. Uh, he's hit Bra Hugh on the trumpet, Larry Willis on the keyboards, and him taking us through the 60s and uh, with his fantastic banter and take, schooling us in terms of jazz standards. So, magnificent man and uh, really sorely missed. We knew quite early that he was feeling poorly, mm. and this project actually was hatched even before his passing. Wow, wow. Yeah. And you're big on giving gifts, not just to, to individuals. You're, you, the gifts that you design, the gifts that you create are gifts that everybody can experience. The, this, this gift is not just, it's like arch for arch, right? Yeah. It's, it's a legacy. It's a legacy that encapsulates what he was passionate about. It's a legacy that encapsulates the artistic direction that Cape Town is, is, is moving into, right? Completely. And we had a whole host of options as to what we were going to do with Bra Hugh. We actually lobbied this Artscape Theatre to look at the possibilities of renaming Artscape Theatre after Hugh Masekela. And that is still a work in progress. We must get that going. And Marlene is somewhere here. So Marlene, Marlene had this, uh, just the inconvenience of having a new board. So we couldn't quite gerrymander this as quickly as we needed to do. But that's a work in progress. Okay. But then you all know that we had this wonderful project that we've done with uh, Thomas Heatherwick. And Thomas would have been here with me on the stage, but he had to go back, fly back to London to do a, a big presentation today. But we did the whole nine yards on that project around Mocha. And sometime last year, the fantastic people at the VNA waterfront, David Green, who's here somewhere, I think, and uh, suggested that uh, why don't they honor our contribution to uh, Mocha yeah. by doing a naming ceremony. And they wanted to name the thing after us. And we thought, God, we've got, we're just starting. And our best year is ahead of us. And uh, I think that'll be uh, not something that we really like to do. Instead, we thought, thought that we should deflect the honor. And instead, we're going to be naming a gallery inside Zeitzmoker, their biggest gallery, for a guy who was the original pan-African cultural activist. And I think it's quite poignant and absolutely appropriate that Africa's first museum of contemporary African art ha is, has the Hugh Masekela Gallery. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Ravi. Africa's first contemporary art gallery museum with a gallery named after a pan-African artist activist. That's extraordinary, Cape Town. Well done. You get to enjoy all of that and share it with the rest of the world. It is my great pleasure and honor to call upon Brahim Masekela's sister, ambassador, activist, also lover of art, and patron of the arts as well. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Barbara Masiquet. Lots and lots of love to you. Thank you. Yes. Um, when I first went to New York in 1963, my brother came to meet me at the airport. And um, when we came out of the airport, I reached to open the door. I nearly fell down because the door just opened on its own. So that will tell you a little bit about our childhood. He was my elder brother, and he taught me how to be street smart, how to be brave, and how not to compete with him. <laughs> when somebody you love passes away, everywhere you go, if that somebody is like you, is that everybody tries to make you cry. They tell you, they remind you of all
the beautiful stories and experiences that they had with him. And one of the jokes I always had about my brother was that he loved relatives. Every time he met somebody, especially when we returned to South Africa, he would find a way of saying that we were related to them. You know, so I have a lot of nieces and nephews and cousins and uncle, uncles, children, and because he always collected family wherever he went. And that is the greatest gift that he gave us because in mourning for him, we have such a large family to comfort us and for us to comfort. We have discovered that we knew that he was famous, we knew that people loved him, but after he left on January the 23rd, we just discovered that it was, we knew very little about him, that he was actually loved much more than we could ever have imagined. And uh, that he was famous, you know, greater than, more famous than we ever thought he was, you know. Um, and it's been a great, wonderful uh, uh, revelation to us. And uh, not least among his family is Design in Daba. He loved coming here, and I would tease him and say, Hugh, you're now trying to be an intellectual like me. And he says, I am. <laughs> but actually, my brother was a very erudite, fun-loving, disciplined artist. And um, he was designed by my father, who was a sculptor, a gardener, a lover of plants, and my mother, who was a social worker. And the first English word we learned when we grew up in my home was the word design. We didn't know what it meant, but it was the first English word that we, we, we learned because in my home, uh, in my homes, because my father was what is called a rolling stone, so we lived in, in Benoni, in Springs, in Germiston, all over the mining towns on the Rand. And my father at each stage was learning more and more about design. Uh, he was a health inspector. But um, we grew up in a home where we listened to music where we knew about Picasso and Thomas Moore, and we knew that there was wonderful, wonderful people all over Africa who designed masks, and that it had been their history to do this. So um, the quarrels that my parents had when we grew up were about the amount of money that my father spent buying art and design books. Um, so it is not a wonder that uh, Hugh became so attached to design in Daba. And on behalf of my family, I'd like to thank everybody for the recognition that they've given my brother. He deserves it, of course. Um, and if my brother were here, I would say, it's not a pleasure for me to address you because my brother is not here. And he would laugh, he would laugh out loudly because those are the kind of jokes that we made with each other. He, only him, he would understand what I'm saying. Um, we miss him very much, but as I've said before, he's created 
a whole universal family for us. And he's very much alive. He's very, very much alive every day for us, his family, and we know he is for you too. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. And we're still not done, guys. So, Brahu had memorial services. All over the world, people across the planet commemorated his passing. Of course, he lived in Liberia and in Guinea and in different parts of the United States before he returned home to South Africa and toured the world extensively. We saw his beautiful memorial. Both of his bands played. We had the best divas in South Africa serenading him. He's left us with an extraordinary body of work. His funeral was a private ceremony and exquisite. And at that ceremony, one of the most moving parts of it was a recital of a poem by Silema Masikela, whom we have brought to come and share that piece with us today. Please, will you join me in welcoming Selema Masekela to the stage? Over the weeks that my uncle has passed away, we've had a lot of artistic tributes, and I felt it fitting for a man of such creativity that I close with a poem. This poem is titled, The Baddest Flugel Man in All the Land. I heard he walked with a bounce up and down in London town. I heard he bebopped and rock steadied through Manhattan and Harlem nights. It said he did the Congo jive through Kinshasa and the Afro with Fela. Legend has it he played dice with the Van Alex and Kofifi dan Skriela Pop. I heard he loved the ladies and the ladies loved him too. Always smiling and teasing. Perhaps that's why they named him Hugh. Humorous, a soul that cared for other souls. Perhaps that's why they named him Hugh. Human, an African proud of his black hair. Aren't you proud of your screws? An African proud of his black skin. Aren't you proud of your hue? He grasped a brass jewel and into its twisted rib cage he breathed the warm truth giving life to a metal carriage. He of the flugel horn, a musical marriage, grew. And Adam, this his Eve. A Romeo, this his Juliet. No, 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 no. A Lobengula, this is Twalile. A Mokocho, this is Mantatisi. A Solomon, this his Queen of Sheba. A Masikela, this his Mabena. A tale of love that will live forever through the laughter forever through his adventures and chapters, and forever through the music. Cherish your elders, cherish your elders, cherish your elders. Thank you very much. The events of the last... 10 days in this country have been extraordinary. And exactly a week ago, most of the country was tuned in to listen to the new president speak. And he used Brahu's song, a, a, a traditional choral folk spiritual song that was reimagined by Brahu, Tumamina. Send me as a call to action. Tumamina was trending on social media. Tumamina become, became a, a, a new kind of anthem for an era that we are stepping into, that we are creating, that we are defining now. And for those of us who are in the business of creativity, for those of us who are in the business of using our imaginations to give those who 
are able to connect to our worlds a new vocabulary for their own imaginations, that call to action becomes that much more important in this era. The project of building a new nation is not done. The project of ending racism is not done. The project of turning this society from one of the most unequal societies on earth into a society where people are able to access their rights and beauty like the creativity we've experienced over the last three days, those projects are not done. That's everybody's business. But we can't get on with that business without art. We can't get on with that business without the realm of imagination. We are in the business of making that world and these things possible with the work that we do. It is that important. It is that essential. No one else is going to do it. It's up to us, artists, creators. Other people take their cues from us. We're living in a world with the changing zeitgeist, Me Too, Afrofuturism, the end of misogyny is nigh, the end of racism is nigh. We are imagining this. It's going to come from us or it's not going to come at all. So Tumamina becomes a mission statement for each of us to allow ourselves to be sent where we are needed with the work that we do, with the gifts that we have, with the talents that we have. As we leave this room, you are going to be given a badge that says Tumamina. Yes. And tonight, when you party at Nightscape, and you enjoy your fine cape dop, because I see you people, you don't have water, but you got nice booze, and you've been pumping us with it, which I'm not complaining about. When you take your nice libation under the libations of the skies, send a shout out to Brahu and call on the universe to ask you, to tell you where you must be sent. People have traveled from very far to be here today to pay tribute to Brahu, the Masekela family from Johannesburg, Jay something all the way from Lisbon, and as a very special offering for all of us and for the spirit of Brahu that brought the rain, we have brought Brahu's band to serenade us. And of course, they need a front man, right? So we have asked legendary vocalist from Sankomot, ah, live and direct from Lesotho, the village pope to serenade us to Mamina, give it up for Brahu's band and Tepatola. <laughs>
the battle of these states. I wanna lend a hand, I wanna be there for the alcoholic, I wanna be there for the drug addict, I wanna be there for the victims of violence and abuse. I wanna lend a hand, Please 